Hannelet Jordaan van BKB is eerste aan die woord in vandagse episode van Plaas TV. Sy verduidelik wat BKB se Decision Support Services aan hulle kliente bied. Then, Karen Fenter from Plaas Media recently attended the 2022 Ruwasa Congress in Port Elizabeth. Stay tuned for feedback on this event. First up is Lisa with the news. Wat die natuur kort sal voermel voorsien. Welcome to the news. Wine Estates Blauwklippen en van Loveren Vineyards recently announced a strategic partnership aimed at enhancing their premium offerings to the local market. This new partnership will accelerate fine South African wine offerings to the world market. It is also focused on the production and distribution of their wine portfolios. The extent of their working together will be done with the assistance of expert advisors to comply with relevant regulatory requirements. In the potential impact of the Stomkop Kever on South Africa's economy can 275 million rand over the following 10 years. This cutting is the result of the samenwerking between onder andere economen van the University of School for Public Leiderschap and Entomology and the Institute for Bosbau and Landbau Technology by the University of Pretoria. Following this research, the municipality will the last moet dra in die die indringer nie gestuid kan word nie. Die stomkopkever is in 2012 vir die eerste keer in Suid-Afrika opgemerk en het sederdien na 8 van die landse 9 provincies verspreid. And France has started a trial to vaccinate ducks against highly pathogenic avian influenza. The Ministry of Agriculture reports that two vaccines are being tested that can protect the birds against infection and prevent the virus from spreading. The trial is being held in regions most affected by those outbreaks. It is supervised by veterinary experts and by the National School of Veterinary Medicine in Toulouse. And that's today's news. What nature lacks, Fulmore will provide. Anne let your dan van BKB slide now by ons. Anne moest meer te vertel van BKB is DSS of the well decision support service, a data on clearing stains that a little clean to be beat. Anne let you come, thank you, sweet snorter. Ik denk dat die goede ding is, is dat onze klomdata, boerendata, maar van ons is die werkelijke waarde toevoeging van die data, wanneer data en inlichting verwerkt wordt en gebruikt wordt, zodat so die producent kan ingelichte keuzes maken om zo so doen dat zijn boerderij te optimaliseren. Wat is die hoofddoel van die dienst en wat wil jullie samen met die boer bereiken? Die, die hoofddoel is op elke plaats is dat een normaal verdelen. Onze passagiers, onze uitskieters. Maar ons wil die hele normaal verdeling skyf. As ons die gemiddeld van die boer kan help skyf en die producent kan help skyf, is dit tot allemaal sy voordeel. So dier die inlichting die passasiens op die plaas te identificeer, kan ons help dat nie producerende dieren nie op die plaas is nie, vooral in die huidige economische klimaat van ons boerderij. So dit is wat ons help, as ons kan help en die boer so wens meer raak, kan ons ook ons nou voordeel daarvan trek. Wat die rol speel technologie by hierdie dienst aan die leed? Ons hoor al in die stel hoe elektronische plaatjies en al die type goeders al meer relevant raak in die bedrijf. Ek dink natuurlijk met technologie is die insommeling van die data baie makkelijker, die oordrag is vinniger. Maar ek dink een belangrike ding wat ons producenten moet besef is, ons hoef die technologie so die alles te hee om te kan begin om die dienst te kan gebruik nie en om die resultaten van die dienst te kry nie. Ons allemaal het vir iemand het ons landboeke of ons het speengewigte. Die oomlik wat ons die data iwers begin insommel, kan het gebruik word in die model. So het is nie afhankelijk van technologie nie, alhoewel technologie die proces baie vergemakkelijk. Hoe werk hierdie dienst saam met visuele klassering dier jylle technische adviseer? Ek dink ons moet 
uit die belangrijke deel, hier so is ook weer eens, ons het ras aan daarde, maar ek is ook weer wat sy ras ons boer nie, is daar een stel ras aan daarde vir visuele klasse. Maar wat hierdie dienst as een extra tool wil bied, is wanneer ons technische adviseers in die veld kloor hierdie skope visueel geklas het vir prulfoute en sovoorts, dat ons verder uit die visueel correcte dier, as ek so kan sê, die optimaal producerende dier ook identificeer, om so doende alles te optimaliseer van visueel, maar ook het dier wat vir ons geld op die plaas maak. Is hierdie een one size fits all dienst aan die led, of probeer jylle een bykie inpas by die behoeftes ook van die producent? As ons die Afrika kyk, is hier boere van alle types bestuur, velde verskil, plaase verskil, even die genetika van plaas tot plaas verskil in die selle ras. Die hele doel hiervan is, ons wil op die boerse plaas, op die producentse plaas, of hy nou voer, nie voer nie, hoe ook ons sy bestuur toegepas word, die dier wat onder sy bestuur optimaal produseer. So ons wil nie het, dit moet vir allemaal die sy standaard wees nie. Ons wil ook nie die ouse boerderij praktijk verander nie. Ons wil het kyk in sy praktijk, hoe kan ons die beste dieren wat vir optimaal gaan produseer, identificeer. Dat is so doen nou, my kan voort aan boer, en so wak ons ook van, ek dink wat het ook bykom is, ons kan nie altyd nie horizontal uitbreid in die Afrika nie maar vertikale uitbreiding is een groot deel. So hoe maak ons seker, as ek kan een voorbeeld, 500 ooie aan hou, wat in 500 ooie is my meest producerendste ooie op my plaas, en met hulle wil ek voortkoop. Het help nie met ons oud passasier saam. So dit is maar of die hele ding, elke boer sien gaan anders lyk, omdat elke boer uniek in sy eie plaas ook is. En so is sê Annelette Jordaan van BKB en sy het ons vandag meer vertel van hulle DSS, oftewel Decision Support Service. Dit is een data ontleringsdienst wat hulle hulle kliente bied. ABE Biotech. Fermentatie is gelijk aan prestatie. Goeiedag en die weekse commoditeit prijsverslag sien ons dat BSA graad prijse stijg met 0.9%, C graad prijse stijg met 4.9%. Die speenkalf prijs het gedaal met 1.2%, wat skaapvleis prijse betref het A graade gestijg met 0.7%, C graade het gestijg met 2.2% en die speenlamp prijs stijg met 2.1%. Die vark prijs het gestijg met 1.7%, die syboekhaar prijs op die laaste veiling het gestuig met 1.1%, die geomelie prijs daal met 1.6%, die koring prijs het gedaal met 1.7%, die soeaboon prijs stuig met 3.2% en die sonneblom prijs stuig met 2.4%. Die rand het versterkt in die dollar met 1.6%, terwyl het verswak het in die euro met 0.4%. BKB, die betrouwbare thuiste van landbouw. Good day, I am Karin Vente at Blast Media and I am based in the lovely Eastern Cape. I was very fortunate to attend the recent Ruvasa conference which was held from the 9th to the 11th of May at the Boardwalk Hotel in Port Elizabeth, also known as Quebeja. Our Ruvasa stands for the Ruminant Veterinary Association of South Africa and they are a special interest group of SAVA, which is the South African Veterinary Association. Membership is open to all veterinarians across the country, and they can be working in the private and public sector as well as universities, other industries, laboratories and research institutions. This year's keynote speaker at the Congress was Dr. James Blichnot, who is Director at Asset Research. And then there is the CEO of the South African Feedlot Association, Diewald Olivier, talking about livestock identification and traceability. And also in the section of control diseases, we will also listen to Dr. Sean Morris, who is a specialist veterinarian surgeon, and he touched on that dreaded word FMD, otherwise known as food and mouth disease. During day two of the conference, I met with Dr. Gerard Neetling, who is the general manager of the Red Meat Abattoir Association. 
we will be hearing what he had to say about the role of the veterinarian in the provision of meat safety assurances. And then we had Francois Knowles, who is the CEO and registrar of the Agricultural Produce Agents Council, also known as APAC. With this year's focus on biosecurity, he looked at the rules for livestock agents at auctions as well as the role that the veterinarian has to play there. And on a last note, I also had the opportunity to speak to Dr. Theo de Jocher, who is the Executive Director of SAI and President of the World Farmers Organization. He was addressing the delegates about producers being under attack by so-called scientists who are promoting plant-based produce. So, let's tune in and hear what is happening with regards to biosecurity in the world of veterinarians. Hi, my name is James Plugnet. I'm a professor in the Umgevings- and Hulbronbestuur. And when we look at the integration between the natural environment and the economy. Between the natural environment and the economy is people. It is people who decide to take around the economy and it is people who decide to take around the natural environment. And specifically then the boer. Because the boer is the one who on the food floor with the natural environment comes. En dan is het bij een feit. Als de economie gezond is, is de omgeving gezond. Als de omgeving ziek is, is de economie ziek. So, in een situatie waar ons vandaag is, waar de economie stukkend is, waar de omgeving stukkend is, zit ons eindelijk met die antwoord voor, voor ons. Kom ons genees die natuurlijke omgeving en dan kan ons die economie genees als gevolg van die directe interactie tussen die omgeving en die economie. En die boel is die een wat in die natuurlijke omgeving functioneert. Maar hij heeft zijn adviseurs. Een van die adviseurs is die uh, dierkundigers, zowel als dan die veeartsen. Wat hom van zoveel so hulp kan verschaffen. Om zijn natuur grond te restaureren. En met gezonde grond, gezonde kosten te produceren voor gezonde mensen. I'm Devon Willifield, the CEO of the South African Feedlot Association, and I had the opportunity to speak at the 2022 Vasa Congress to the veterinarians and to some of the other participants. I specifically focused on traceability and where we currently stand with traceability from a Let's SA perspective as well as a South African livestock traceability perspective. That is the industry's organization driving traceability in South Africa. What we're going to be doing is working together to an end goal whereby we at the end of the day can say that we've got a national traceability database which we can utilize to the advantage of the industry. Most of what we did up until now was to sensitize not only primary producers or the farmers but the total value chain with regards to the advantages that we can get if we've got a traceability system. The end goal at the end of the day is to say that we've got a system or a platform or a standard which we adhere to, which will advance the exports of South African red meat or South African beef. We are currently actually moving on very, very quickly and it's going very well. We hope to see by the end of this year a specific dedicated outcome to have systems in place that can assist primary producers, uh, to have their animals, their cells, and their property part of a system that can trace them within the value chain. If you would like to have any further information on this, please contact us at www.safeedlot.co.za or call me at 082-800-3737. Thank you. Afternoon everybody, my name is Dr. Sean Morris. I'm a feedlot consultant in the South African feedlot industry and I was afforded the opportunity this morning by the Women and Veterinary Association of South Africa to share my thoughts and ideas having been involved in a number of outbreaks in various feedlots throughout South Africa. The situation that we currently find ourselves in is probably the worst case scenario that could have happened to South Africa with respect to some of our trading partners with the outbreak having now been seen in the Free State, Gauteng, as well as the Northwest Province. Um, I think that the actions that have been taken to date 
have probably been some of the most effective, and I wish to compliment the Free State Department of Agriculture, the Gauteng Department of Agriculture or Veterinary Services, for want of a better word, because they've been extremely proactive. And as I stand here in front of you today, the Free State is now free of any fishing mouth positive cattle. Um, the first vehicles from Gauteng have already left on their destination to the avatar where they will be destined for slaughter. And hopefully by this evening, the third farm in Gauteng will be clean. And that leaves us in the Northwest Province to ensure that we have a speedy and a successful outcome in eradicating the disease from that province. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. If I don't pick up the first time, I'll leave your name, number and a WhatsApp. And as I get time during my day or week, I'll get back to you. Okay. My contact details are 082 411 6037. And if you require any more detail following that, I'll pass that on to you as a necessary. My name is Gerard Nietlin. I am a veterinarian and the general manager of the Red Meat Abattoir Association. During the Ruwaza conference, um, I spoke about meat safety assurances by the veterinarians and abattoirs in South Africa. The meat inspection scheme was published in 2017 and it drastically changed the, the way that veterinarians became involved in the meat safety assurances at our abattoirs. These veterinarians are not only responsible for the evaluation of carcasses detained for second inspection, but they are also involved and responsible for all of the other processes at the abattoir to ensure that a safe product is provided to our consumers. This includes the health of the animals received at the abattoir, the welfare aspects at the abattoir, slaughter procedures, as well as the proper chilling of carcasses prior to outloading at the facility. In terms of the red meat regulations, uh, the abattoir is managed by a set of rules referred to as the hygiene management system. And it's also the responsibility of the veterinarian to evaluate these procedures, systems and records to ensure that there is the necessary compliance uh, to all aspects. Further to this, the abattoir is the veterinarian is also responsible for the handling of any risk material from the abattoir and any other condemned products to make sure that the environment is not harmed in any way during the operation of the abattoir and the destruction of the risk material. Um, the scheme then provided for far wider range of activities by the veterinarian that than was uh, the case before. You are so welcome to contact me at 082-551-7232. The number is 082-551-7232. Good day, my name is Frans van Hals. I'm the Registrar of APAC. APAC is the Agricultural Produce Agents Council. We are here in Port Elizabeth attending the Ruwasa Congress. Ruwasa is a culmination of all the veterinary, veterinary specialists in South Africa. We had the opportunity to address them in terms of the APAC biosecurity rules for livestock agents. It's very important to have this discussion with all the vets um, going forward, we are looking forward to a relationship uh, where they will contribute to the success of auctioneers, making sure that animals going through auctions are safe, and that is why we're here today. So we are solidifying that relationship. We hope that it will be one that will contribute to the success of auctions, and we are sure that we will have a successful time in engaging biosecurity in the future. With the current foot and mouth outbreak in South Africa, it's important that we focus on these aspects. But please remember that it's not about foot and mouth only. It's all diseases that are potentially identified at auctions. So we have got a vested interest in looking after the consumer. And uh, we believe that this Congress will contribute positively in that regard. 
If you would like to learn more about APAC and the work that we do, and specifically the biosecurity rules, please visit our website at www.apac.org.web for any further information and any questions that might, might arise from that. Thank you very much. For anybody that's interested to contact us, please contact our website at www.apacweb.org. You will find our telephone numbers there. And please contact us if you have any questions about the biosecurity rules and any work that we do for the, this beautiful industry that we serve. Thank you very much. I'm Thierry Jager. I'm the president of the World Farmers Organization and the executive chairman of our Family Farmers Network, SAI. Today we had the conference of the veterinarians at Rufasa here in Port Elizabeth and we were discussing the future of livestock farming and all the challenges which an uh, ever-expanding global market is presenting to livestock farmers. And it's about health issues, it's about our footprint on nature, climate, biodiversity and it's also about the moral issues, about how we farm, how we treat our animals because consumers no longer only look at price or at quality. Increasingly, consumers also want to scan a QR code and through blockchain they want to know exactly how were these animals treated before they were slaughtered. And there's only one reason why we talk about value chains in agriculture, it's because you cannot push a chain, you can only pull it. And the pulling force is the market. We can only produce what the markets expect from us. And if they expect from us certain ways of treating our livestock, we will need to abide by it or we will not be able to sell our products. It is particularly challenging for the smaller and medium scale enterprises on farms, so-called family farmers, because for them to still be around and competitive in 10 or 20 years from now, they need to adapt by a changing market, by changing technologies and by all these pressures on us. But alas, it is not for the individual farmer to fight these battles. We are doing it in well-organized structures. And still today, farming is the best organized sector in the world. The United Nations already in 2012 identified urbanization as one of the strongest forces changing the face of the world. Can it be turned around? Can we have a pushback? I believe so with every cell in my body, but only if we can strengthen family farmers, because that creates an alternative. It gives life to small towns, and more than anything else, it gives children the, the option to choose a rural lifestyle. This is why it is so important that we keep every farmer who is currently out there eking out a living from the soils that we keep him on his farm. If you're a family farmer and you need some advice or assistance, don't hesitate to contact us. My email address is stew at sci.org. Beer Car Beer, the betrouwbare taste of landbouw. BKB, the trusted home of agriculture.